So I have taken long date. Okay, no problem. Format the cells E4 to G8 to include dollar sign with two decimal places E4 to G8. We will do that after we put some values in there. So calculate the gross pay for employees. We need to calculate the gross pay, which will be the hourly rate multiplied by the hours worked. So equal to Yesterday, I showed you how you can directly select both the cells, use the multiplication symbol, right? What did I show you yesterday for multiplication? This, this multiplied by this. We can do it like this, okay? And we will get the product, which is basically the gross pay. Or we can use a function called as product. Let me show you that today. Okay, there is a function called as product and the inputs that it will take is the numbers that are supposed to be multiplied. So I need the product of, I need the product of first number now. Okay, we'll have to give the first number. You can see the argument number one in bold, this comma. You can see second number in bold, right? This is the second argument. So we're going to get the product of the data in C4 and D4. This is relative referencing. Okay, this is relative referencing. And when I copy that down by doing a double click on this handle here, it just gets copied down. So what is the formula here? You can see in the formula box, product of C5 and D5. What is the formula used here? Product of C6 and D6. The formula used here, product of C7 and D7, so on and so forth. Now we are supposed to compute professional tax. Calculate the professional tax with 6%. That is going to be 6% of the gross pay. So what I will do is, I will keep it in one column and reference this column. Okay, I will keep it here and I will reference this column to compute the professional tax. It is computed as what? It is computed as the product so whatever is the uh, pay that we are giving to the employees, okay? This pay multiplied by the professional tax, which is over here. And this is supposed to be an absolute reference. It should not move down, right? For all the rows, we need to multiply the gross pay with 6% only. No relative movement is required. So I'm going to lock that in place by using absolute referencing. How did I do this? I just hit the function key F4. So when you press down F4 function key, dollar symbols will come before the row and the column, means it has been logged in place. Now we'll apply it. And then simply I will copy it down to the remaining rows. Finally, we have to compute the net pay. Net pay would be the gross pay minus the professional tax. That is what we get in hand, right? From the gross, the tax is deducted and then it is given to us. So is equal to this number minus this number. Enter. And I have to copy that formula down. So I'll just simply go there and drag it down. Now look at the form. Let's do the format, uh, formatting. We are supposed to format the cells from E4 to G8 by including a dollar sign. So that would be currency. By default, it is a rupee. And then after choosing currency, we go to this accounting symbol. And then we can choose, let's say, English United States, because we need a dollar sign here. All right. What else? Uh, it must have two decimal places. It already has decimals. If we don't want the decimals, we can click here and remove the decimals, decrease them. So in this case, we need the decimals to be there. I will leave it. OK, I hope you all understood. So simple formatting is what we've done here. Whenever you people get time while you're practicing, create some sample dummy data sets like this, and you can practice all the uh, options that are there in the home ribbon, the font group, the alignment group, the number group. Now that we have understood about styles, explore the styles group and the cells group. Okay. Um, what else? So we'll now proceed to the next concept. How do we get the dollar part is, see, first of all, 
you have to change the data type. I change the data type to currency. And because my system local by default is India, the currency is a Indian rupee. This is the symbol for Indian rupee. We've been asked to include the dollar sign in the requirement. So what I did is after choosing currency, I went to the accounting symbol. Just below currency, you can find it. Okay, and here it, it gave Indian rupee by default. I want dollar, United States dollar. So I'm selecting the second option. And this is how it appears. Okay, and yesterday I think there was a question on can we sort the data? We can do that. We will be looking at that a little later into the training. Sorting is possible. And uh, someone kept asking, what if profit is zero? That question was not clear. You might have to elaborate on that question. OK, so that's it uh, about formatting. I hope it's clear. Now, how do we include some new add-ins, packs into the tool? Like, for example, analyze data. Um, if this is not already present in your version of Excel, that first you must check if it is there in the add-ins. Sometimes if it is um, not available at all, it could be a version issue. Okay, like yesterday someone said that uh, you were not seeing IFS. IFS wasn't there on your machine, right? So that could be a version issue. Whether or not a function is available on the version of Excel that you are using, you can simply check by type, just doing a double click on any cell, put the equal to sign, and then type in the name of the function. If you find it in the list, it means the version of Excel spreadsheet that you are using has that feature. And if you're not able to see the function, it means the version of Excel that you're using does not have that feature, as simple as that. Okay, it's as simple as that to check whether or not something is available. Now to get the add-ins, you will have to go to the file menu. Okay, so here we are on the spreadsheet, right? I'm going to the file menu before home we have it on the top left corner. So go there. And then down here, bottom left corner, there is an option called as options. You will see something called as options. Now, when I click on options here, um, under add-ins, you have to go. Okay, you have to go under add-ins and then you have to manage Excel add-ins is what we're trying to manage. So if I click on the go button, it will show me the other add-ins which are available. So I had added this analysis tool pack. Because I added analysis tool pack earlier, on my screen on the top right corner, you can see this analyze data. Okay, if it is not present by default, then you may have to use this. Similarly, solver add-in, because later on we will be working with what if analysis, um, maybe towards the end of next week, somewhere around seventh or eighth session, we'll be working with solver add-in. So that time you will need to know these things, okay? You'll, you'll require it, so you can add them. Not now, later on you can add them. Okay, Satish, I hope that clarifies uh, your doubt. Naveen, you can select cells adjacent to payroll also. You can type in additional data over there if you have to. Yes, these are still available. You can enter more data over here. All right. So I would like to give you all an introduction to the concept of lookup function. Just I will show you what it does. Okay, Rakshan, no problem. You leave it. If, if it's not showing anything, it means we don't have enough data to analyze whatever is going on over there. We don't have enough data to analyze. Okay, you can close it. It's not required for now. We will use it only when we get a little further into the uh, concepts. Okay. I simply introduce you all to the concept of lookup, but we will be focusing completely on lookups tomorrow, okay? A very, very interesting feature which um, Excel has. 
So look at this data here. Look at this data that we have over here. Okay, so I have information about certain products, the states where they are being sold, and certain um, statistics, certain information there. Now, you can notice that product type is not available. I don't have information about what is the type of that product, whether it is coffee, whether it is tea, whether it is green tea, or is it espresso. The product type is there in another worksheet. Okay, each of these products are classified into different types and the type of the product is in a different sheet, which is not here. Now, what I need is, let's say my, my client has given me this data and they want me to look up. They want me to search for the product type over here. Based on whatever is the product, I need to search for the product type from here and I need to update this information in this column. So what am I trying to do? I'm going to look up, meaning search for the product type in, from some other sheet, fetch it from the other sheet and display it in this sheet. And to be able to use the lookup function, there has to be one field in common. There has to be a common denominator. Okay, I'm trying to search for the product in this sheet. So product should be available in this sheet also. Based on the name of the product, the product type has to be fetched and it has to be pulled back over here. So when you are using lookup, when you're trying to get data from one table to another, or when you're trying to get data from one sheet to another sheet. We are merging data from two different sheets over here, isn't it? What is lookup? It's, it's going to help us to merge data from different sheets, bring data from one sheet into another sheet altogether. So for this, we use a lookup function and there has to be a common field. Please do remember that. If there is no common field between the two tables, then lookup will not work. So let's see how lookup is uh, how to write a lookup function here. There are different varieties, again, different variants in lookup. There is VLOOKUP, there is HLOOKUP, and in the latest versions, there is something called as XLOOKUP. We will be looking at all of these functions in detail tomorrow, the difference between them and how they work. So here I will simply Give VLOOKUP. As you can see, the function has come. I will select it. First thing we need to give is lookup value, meaning what are you trying to search? What is it that you're trying to search? I'm going to search for the data in the product column, this one. Where am I supposed to search for it? That is table array. Okay, you want to search for decaf Irish cream, but where am I supposed to look up? This is the value that I need to look up, but where? That will be the table array. So I need to look up for it in the different sheet. So I'll go to that sheet and select this data. Look up in this range. Search for decaf Irish cream in this range. Okay, now it knows that it's supposed to search in this range. Because the lookup range is a completely different table or a completely different sheet, you can see how the addressing is, right? In the product type information, the name of the sheet, exclamation mark and the range. So we lock in this range because it has to always come to this range only. I'm going to lock in that range by using absolute referencing. Okay, after that comma, column index number. Column index number. So we should not give the name of the column, we give the index number. So, um, in that range, it has to look up for column number two, okay? If you have noticed product is one column and product uh, type is the second column. So it starts numbering the columns from the left side, starting with one. The leftmost column gets number one, so this will be, suppose this is my data. This is column one. This becomes column two. This becomes column three, so on. So I need to get data from column number two. 
and then we have to give one other variable which is called as range lookup or it's basically whether we have to look for an approximate match or are we trying to go with an exact match. I need the product here to exactly match with the product on the other sheet, isn't it? It has to be an exact match. So for exact mat match, we need to give false. Okay, so once I do this, it has pulled back coffee from the product type information. It pulled back coffee. For decaf Irish cream, it pulled back coffee. Now I'll simply double click on this to copy the formula down. And you can see the correct product type is being copied back depending on what the product is. Okay, I did, I'm not, my idea today is not to teach you VLOOKUP. It's just to give you a demonstration of how this feature helps us to bring data from different tables together, to merge data from different tables together. You're searching for something elsewhere and showing the result over here. So that is the beauty of a lookup function.